Because I have to brush up my 28 year old daughter tells me dad you are old at 60 <laughs> when I saw Ariana Grande on the program I thought that was a new something at Taco Bell oh girl let me give you all your respect <laughs> did y'all enjoy this icon she's an icon herself come on make her feel love the greater great step of the city of David Hi, I'm G. Craig Lewis, here with another episode of The Exposition. Uh, and I want to thank you for joining us. You know, this is a new show that we're doing. Thank you for all the positive feedback that we've received. Uh, this show is a little different from what we normally do, but uh, this, um, those questions that you are ask, asking in the comments and different things that you've been sending us, we'll try to deal with some of those later on in uh, episodes to come. But this particular episode is going to be dealing with devil worship in music or the devil in music, which is something that, uh, you know, that, that's the foundation of what EX Ministry started with uh, for many, many years, 20 years. I traveled the globe uh, teaching the truth behind hip hop, the truth behind music. And, you know, I always say it almost braggingly, but before there ever was a YouTube, mm -hmm. that was a me traveling <laughs> and we were doing we were exposing the Illuminati and exposing the, the hand signs and devil worship in music and how the devil was using music. And that started way back in 1990, actually, probably a little before that when I first started doing it. But um, God has been good. Here we are today, 20, 20 something years later, and nothing has changed. We're still talking mm -hmm. about it, still talking about it, using the Bible, mm -hmm. haven't changed anything um, because we just believe in the truth of the word. So here on the exposition, of course, I have with me uh, Jay Bryan. How you doing, Jay? All right, Pastor. You doing uh, good? I'm doing good, man. Good. And I also have uh, our media mogul, uh, Miss Carmina Barnett. How you doing, Carmina? I am wonderful. All right, good. Okay, so we're here and we're ready to engage in this topic dealing with um, devil worship and music. Well, let's start here. You gave us a little bit of the history behind EX Ministries, but let's really talk about the vision and how, did, how you see that playing out today. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that, because uh, the vision is very important. Uh, this, this happened, I don't know the exact year. I change it almost every time I say it, mm -hmm. but it was somewhere, do, don't, don't I do that? Oh. But it's somewhere in the 88, 89 range, somewhere in there where the Lord just gave me a vision and showed me the music industry, and at the and that at that time it was a uh, heavy metal that was um, uh, that most people were listening to, or uh, the uh, actually Caucasian audience 
devil was, uh, they were doing devil worship and biting bats' heads off and all those kind of things oh, back. Stuff, right. Yeah, that, that was happening when I was in high school. But God gave me a vision and showed me that eventually it would be the African-American kids that would be worshiping the devil in music. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I began to tell people about it, of course, people were like, you crazy, that can't happen. <laughs> Black folk gonna always love the Lord. Right. Black folk ain't gonna be listening to no devil music. They ain't gonna be worshiping the devil in concerts. They're not gonna be throwing up the devil sign and all that. And lo and behold, 20 something years later, now we see a plethora. I mean, almost every famous African-American audience has some kind of video, lyric or something where they're talking about the devil or they're throwing up hand signs or doing gestures to worship the devil. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all come true. Right. And the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you can go back. I think I built a website myself just to put the vision up back then. Um, and now today the vision is truer than ever. It, it's, it's really, um, really coming to pass. Yeah, absolutely, Pastor. And it's, um, you know, if, if I can say this, it's amazing to see, um, and, and obviously not from a champion standpoint, just the idea of seeing um, a word go forth for the body of Christ and even for the world to hear or, or experience and then see each step materialize as the information was given. But um, one thing you've always said, and I, um, I think is a hard truth about, or oh, that comes from EX Ministries, is it's just not information being given. Um, it's, it's information being given and it's also a solution being given at the same time, which is Jesus Christ. So that, that will point me to um, I guess kind of revitalizing the whole concept of how the devil is using the artist to force devil worship um, in today's modern time. So um, as we do here, uh, let's let's go to scripture first. Romans 6 and 19, it says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Uh, for as ye have yielded you mem your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. And basically what's, what's taking place here is um, it's talking about um, the, the, the lifestyle of either being a slave to righteousness or a slave to sin, right? Mm -hmm. And so tying that into how the devil is using artists, um, unfortunately, we do have a depletion in responsibility from parenting. Um, we always bring it back to the kids because mm -hmm. the Bible is very clear on who's carrying um, the word from generation to generation. It's always going to be the young people that have the energy um, and as, as it relates to that. So, of course, they would be the, the most impressionable. Right. Or in the most impressionable, should mm -hmm. I say. Um, so you get these kids, they start young. It started a long time ago. Um, it started with Jackson five and maybe a little bit more where you get these kids and you exploit them for their gifts and their talents. Mm -hmm. And they're raised to be something that God didn't intend them to be. That gets perverted in who you're supposed to be as a man or as a woman. Um, and those things just continue to get turned and split. And now we're in a day and time where we're producing that. So we're producing a seed of disobedience and we're producing uh, a seed of discord in these kids. Um, and, and it's being done heavily through music. And it's very easy. It's being used by Fortune 500 companies, McDonald's. Um, I mean, you, you, you can't go anywhere without somebody using music or some shape or form of music um, to gain the persuasion or influence over over today's time. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, well, let me say this. Even uh, the Bible speaks of using the young because they're strong. So um, the young, they're always going to be targeted. You know, they're going to be targeted by, by the devil. And the easy way to get the devil in the mind of a kid is music. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, my son used to always tell me, and, and um, uh, uh, when he was younger, uh, he would always say, you know, you got to watch kids that just walk around with headphones on all day. All right. And that's because they are literally being indoctrinated by what they're listening to. So mm -hmm. if you're the devil, why wouldn't that be your go-to if you know that's where a person is secluded? That's the song that's reaching them emotionally. That's the song that's making them feel better. It's almost like a drug that they don't have to pay for. Well, they pay for it, but they don't have to like break a law to use it. Right. right and right. so they put the headphones on. And so that's even back when it was rock and roll, that's what it was. But mm -hmm. now even more so it's common for the devil to even just show up in music and, it, and, and people just, that's where they give him a pass. Right. You know, if the devil was to walk in here and sit down with us, we'd all start. It'd be like, a problem, right? Yeah, 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 it'd be a problem. He, he'd get rebuked and, pro you know. But if it's in the song, mm -hmm. he could be in here and there could be a child sitting out there with the headphones on and the devil could be right here mm -hmm. and none of us really be aware of it. And so that's why I believe uh, music is going to always be his go-to. Absolutely. 
Okay, so since we're talking about young people, I'm going to talk about myself for a moment. Right. It wasn't that long ago when I was a young person, <laughs> but <laughs> our parents didn't play so. that. We couldn't go to secular concerts. Right. We could barely go if they felt like somebody was there that was not going to be saved. Right. So now it seems like it's okay. They go to these secular concerts, Christians. Mm -hmm. What is the danger in that? Kind of talk about that. Mm. Well, you, uh, well, I, I, I always say, you know, I, I make the contrast between the, the church service and the, and the secular concert. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a worship service. Whether you want it to be or not, it's a worship service. Somebody is getting worship. Mm -hmm. Somebody's getting praise. Somebody's getting adoration. And like the scripture you read, uh, Romans 6 and 19, mm -hmm. somebody's using their members. They're yielding their members as a servant to something. Right. So whenever we lift our hands up in church, we're giving God praise. Right. Uh, when the song is glorifying him, mm -hmm. we're testifying of it. That's what lifting your hands up it means. I'm testifying of it and I'm yielding myself to the message that's going forth in this song. Right. right? right. Well, that's what dance is all about. When mm -hmm. I'm dancing, I'm using my members. Mm -hmm. to show adoration to whatever it is I'm listening to, right? Absolutely. Or I'm vibing on. Yeah. So if those lyrics are perverted, if the lyrics are satanic, mm -hmm. if the lyrics contain the devil, when I throw my hands up, when I shake my booty, mm -hmm. what am I doing it to? To the devil. To the devil. Mm -hmm. I am worshiping the devil. You think the devil doesn't know this? Mm -hmm. Like you think he doesn't know this is my low key way of getting folks <laughs> right. to give me praise and give me adoration? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what a secular concert is all about. And, you know, I would give them back in the 90s, you might could have slipped in a concert and got confused and said, maybe I shouldn't be here at this, who, who's a 90s artist? I shouldn't be here at this guy concert. Right, right. Even though Aaron Hall sound like a church choir singer, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be here in the 90s. Right. Now, mm -hmm. the the I received a correspondent via text message today of a Bishop William Murphy mm. putting up an Instagram post saying, I'm tired of all these preliminaries, bring on Beyonce. Right. Now this old preacher is sitting in Beyonce's concert. Mm -hmm. Now, back to Guy. Okay, they were singing about sex and stuff like that, but you know, no diggity or whatever. Maybe we didn't know that was Black Street. Maybe, right, right. maybe we don't know what they was talking about. Okay, right. give you a pass. You went in there, you, you left. Right. Beyonce. Yeah. You know before she opens her mouth that she worships the devil. Mm -hmm. You know by all of her videos. Mm -hmm. You know by all of the imagery. Mm -hmm. You know by her husband calling himself mm -hmm. H to the is O V to the is a Jehovah God. Oh, yep. So. We know something is wrong with this. What is a bishop doing at a concert? It's, it's definitely confusing and even more alarming because it's, it's not even hidden behind a veil anymore. It's, it's very, um, just very, it's, it's transparent to an extent. And what I mean by that is now they've created their, their own little congregation within the church of people who are, who are abruptly worshiping or going to support these people. Yeah. It's, it's not something that they're trying to hide anymore. It's not something that they're ashamed of. It's almost like a, a freedom of expression uh, uh, gathering, if you, say, if, if you will. But I, I was saying to the Pastor earlier, it seems like Beyonce is like the key to the gate. <laughs> so the, everybody has their admirations for different talents and skill sets of people who are famous, right? Mm -hmm. and, and to an extent, that's, fi that's fine from afar. You, if you can hear of a person that can play the piano skillfully or that can write a song skillfully, okay, that's cool. But when it comes to the content and or the lifestyle, that's where we draw the line as believers. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why Beyonce gets this uh, repetitious like pass for all of the church. It's, it's, it's dead all year long, but when Beyonce is in concert, everybody, because I mean, I'm, a, I'm on social media a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody posts Beyonce. It's almost like a rite of passage to be in the presence of her or yeah, something. Yeah. It, it, it's just really weird. So that in and of itself, um, should tell you that it's a, it's, a, it's a spirit not of God. If it's drawing you to something that's contrary to the way you're supposed to be living before you arrive to the concert and, mm -hmm. and while you're at the concert and after you leave the concert. So if you can just put it to the side, you know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride. If you can put that to the side just to enjoy music, that, that's the red flag right there because there is no standard if you walk into a place where Beyonce and or Jay-Z would be at. Yeah. So it's confusing. But the secular thing... Uh, because I remember when I was, you know, younger and I'm, you know, 
the concert thing oh, is <laughs> right um when i was just a little bit younger the concert thing was always interesting to me because i remember when the conversation changed and the record companies picked up on that that was a niche market that if you were able to go and get a praise and worship leader and or um band members from a church that you would use that as a part of their bio or you would use that as a part of their um, um introductions because that was a market where you knew people would be drawn solely by the music. Mm -hmm. And we all know that that's how the, how, how the devil failed. His mm -hmm. pride, we, we already know that his presence is melodic. We already know that he's music. So it was, it was him manipulating the church even then saying, aha, almost a, a sense of, since he, he was able to take a third of, of, of the angels with him, it's almost the same thing. Let me go in and figure out a way to get these people drawn out of the church. And it's, it's through and by music. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aretha Franklin, we, we can bring her up. She just passed. And, right. you know, um, uh, prayers go out to her family and everything. But why is the church so up in arms about Aretha Franklin? Well, she, she wasn't the queen of nothing in the church. <laughs> this girl chose another path. She basically did. said, I don't want to sing for your Jesus. Right. Let me sing. Folk go pull out that old 78 record, right. uh, uh, Mary, Don't You Weep. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now the, I just heard the Church of God in Christ wrote a statement wow. uh, of, of her passing and mm -hmm. the music department on official letterhead. Oh, uh, we're, we're, our hearts are saddened by the passing. of. She didn't do anything for the church. She wasn't right. a church musician. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of Beyonce, I saw another video of Beyonce mm -hmm. singing a Clark Sister song. Yeah. And all of the hashtags under it, people going crazy. Oh my goodness, she just put the Clark Sisters on the map. What map? The map to hell? Straight to it. What map? And then the song she was singing, hi ya 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 Hiya <laughs> means life. You know, and uh, you know, even Tweety Clark told my uncle that Hiya didn't, she didn't know really what it meant. Her old mother told her that it meant life. So, you know, you, you can't even find a commentary that says higher right. means life. That's right. just, I don't know what that is. But for, it must not mean anything if Beyonce is singing it. In her concert, dressed like a slut, mm -hmm. up singing a Clark Sister song, and then she shouted out to the Clark Sisters, and they all went crazy. That's like, crazy. oh my goodness, she just put us on the map. She just obey the bay, beehive bay, whatever they call it. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out, shouldn't she be looking to y'all to repent for right. this sin that she's promoting in this concert? Right. Or do y'all even see how sexually explicit what she's doing really is? Right. And what a hindrance to a person as a believer mm -hmm. it could really be. Mm -hmm. Why are you shouting out and hashtagging? Are you really thinking about what this woman is standing for? Right, right. But, but then, Pastor, I guess we have to go a little further since we speaking on the clock, sisters. I mean, how can you do that? When they're all, they're, her personal children adore Jay-Z and Beyonce. They've traveled with these people. They've, they've played on the stages and sung with these people. It's, it's so hard for you to um, impose or to uplift or uphold a standard if your own home is not doing it. Yeah. And that's the key to it all when it comes down to actually really living this life that we're all fighting every day to live. It's, it's the, the thing that continues to, to, I think, to get by also is the pastors who don't rebuke it come that next Sunday. Because here's what I'm doing. I'm, look, I'm seeing it being posted online, and I'm saying something. That's one thing. Somebody else is saying something. That's one thing. But then when they go to church Sunday morning, the pastor doesn't say anything about his entire congregation going to see Beyonce and Jay-Z the entire weekend that they're in the city. Not one. So there's no viral video of a pastor standing up saying, you know what? I have to say something about this. This, this form of worship for, for these idols have gone just a little too far. And now y'all up in here saying that y'all want to worship God or y'all want to hear a word from him. Well, here's a word. You shouldn't have been at that concert and y'all need to repent. You don't hear any of that. That's because they're there. William Murphy is there. Uh, Jamal Bryant took his daughter yeah, yeah. to the Beyonce concert. So they're there. What are they going to say if they're there? Interesting. Boy, if I find out ABC folks, then you know we're going to be it's weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. We bring it out the buckets to purge. Yeah. All of that. And no, I'm just kidding. We don't do that, <laughs> right, we we don't do that bucket <laughs> stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying, how, how else could the devil do this? Uh, you know, outside of music. Music is the way he's going to be able to do this. They, 
Like, they wouldn't have someone walk in church dressed like Beyonce, using foul language like Beyonce, dancing around like Beyonce. You can't come, you can't walk in church and do that. Right. But we'll go see you do it on stage because it's music. Mm -hmm. And that's what the devil does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about maybe some of the clear alliances that we can see. Who are some of the artists that are clearly aligning themselves with the secular? You know, unfortunately, and I hate to say this, this is like really easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, we can go as far as back as Kirk Franklin. Obviously, he, he's shaking everybody's hand that will walk with him, so it doesn't really matter. Um, in terms of him, we, got, uh, we talked about Marvin Sapp, his collaboration with um, R. Kelly. We've talked about Tasha Cobb and her collaboration with Nicki Minaj. Say that again. Nicki Minaj, right? Nick, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, Nicki Minaj, like taken from Minaj, like. Minaj et toi. Yes. The like, nastiest woman yes. with a microphone. Yeah, who refuses to put on clothes. It, refuses. And recorded right? a gospel song with her. It's, it's, it's crazy. Then it, the list goes on and on. Obviously, we know about the most recent uh, Fred Hammond with Snoop Dogg. Um, and the list goes on and on. And, and then let's not forget about th those who have tried to be quiet but still doing the same thing. Look, Cray, let's throw them. We got to still throw them in there. Ty, he, Ty Dolla Sign. Ty Dolla Sign. He, um, he just did something with him. He did a whole record with a uh, producer named Zay Tovin, who's uh, popular for doing uh, a lot of Southern music with, with Gucci Mane and all of these other guys who are, who are perverted and who can perpetuate the culture that, that s s systemically, because this is a word that's being used, just keeps our communities at a hold because it's just ignorance over and over and over and over again. So uh, unfortunately, there is a list, a long list of people who, who continue to stand next to these people to validate them in front, of the, in front of our kids and in front of the church. So then the question becomes, why is music more powerful? More powerful than just speaking or reading or things like that. Why is music so powerful? You know, I, I won't give all of the credit to EX, but I will say that this is something that EX Ministries has been um, preaching and teaching for a very long time. And it's the persuasion of the power of music being able to um, subconsciously affect you without your permission. It's, it's, it's not something that you can particularly stop. If you hear, you can be driving up the, the, the road um, or coming home from work one day or walking home from school and walk past a barbershop or a convenience store or another car next to you. And they could be playing music that you're totally not into. And by the time you reach home, you're humming the melody or perhaps even the words mm -hmm. because it's entering into your subconscious without your permission. It's the only source. And, and why? We, we can't negate the fact that music does have a spiritual aspect to it as well, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Lucifer before his fallen state wouldn't have been the presence of music. Why, why, was, why is music so important um, to people today, right? Um, and I think that that's the sole way that the devil is using um, to, to influence, which is what we're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, people as it relates to, to the music aspect of it. Yeah, and then, then the, on, on the flip side of that, or the other side of that, coming from the musician, the musician can actually use music to target specific things. And we know that from the Bible uh, passage where David, um, Saul actually used David yeah. uh, because he was troubled by an evil spirit. And David came with a pure heart. The Bible says a man after God's own heart. So we know he had a pure heart. Um, and so when he played, he didn't have to sing words, but you know, he actually projected, I talked about it in the last episode, energy. You'd have to see my truth behind hip hop, uh, part eight, Lords of Discord to understand when I talk about the frequencies and different things, but you can uh, project those frequencies and you project the intent of the one playing. And that's why the devil uh, that's why music is so powerful uh, when it comes to using it to, you know, uh, change a culture, a change a mindset, mm -hmm. or change a people group. You know, every movement that's been anti-Christ or anti-God has always had a style or a genre of music attached to it. We know that from hip hop right. having a music style attached to it. Uh, Rastafarians, back when they were calling Bob Marley the Christ, you had reggae or reggaeton music attached to that. Mm -hmm. The hippies, you know, they, they had uh, rock and roll uh, attached to them. So all of these different, and even the Beatles had a uh, transcendental meditation. That's where yoga yeah. came from. That's mm -hmm. how yoga made it to America. It mm -hmm. was because of uh, the Beatles uh, music. So, you know, when you want to change a mindset and change a whole culture, you use music because music can push the intent of a person onto another person or into another person, just like it did with Saul and David. So it's always about the heart of the author. And that's why we don't, 
you know, that's why I tell these musicians and different ones, I've had conversations with, you know, lots of guys out there and I would tell them, you know, hey man, quit doing secular music or they'll do a little secular break in there. Or they'll take mm -hmm. a little Parliament Funkadelic or something and put it in the gospel song mm -hmm. and try to do that and pass that off as worship right. and don't know why folks is throwing wigs everywhere and right. going crazy in the audience. Well, they're remembering where that song came from because the heart of George Clinton and Star Child and, uh, you know, Bernie Worrell mm -hmm. was evil toward, you know, uh, it was evil intent in right. the song. Right. And so when you put that in a song, it's going to have the same trajectory. It's going to still project that. And that's why, you know, people be worshiping God. Oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. And then you throw that Luther in there and everybody, ah, you know, <laughs> everything just changed. It yeah. turned into the little Bob and everything right. because they know that that music is projecting something. And that's why it's very important that we keep our hearts true to God with our music, because music can be very, very dangerous if it's used for the wrong thing. But let me go back to this. So like I said a little earlier, though, at one point there was a clear distinction. Church, world, there was a clear distinction. But now it seems like that's all merged and meshed together. Why is that? I, I think it's a, a couple of things to consider when you're talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, before we get there, I think, it, it, you know, we keep bringing it up, but it's the truth. It goes mm -hmm. back to the home, right? These things, um, you know, with, with the father missing, if I go outside and I'm playing with the little boy from down the street and the little boy comes down there and his ear is pierced, right? That's going to intrigue me. I'm going gonna, gonna to look at it. What is that? You're going to tell me what it is. And then I'm going to go home. I'm going to ask my dad, hey, dad. Can I do what my, my friend Ben is down the street doing? Or what is he doing? He has something in his ear. I want to put something in my ear. And at that point, my father would tell me, no, that's number one, <laughs> right? Then number two, he's going to give me right and wrong about it. What's not, what, in other words, if it's right or if it's wrong, and if it's wrong, he's going to explain that. Then because I'm in a home with a father, then I'll have that discipline instilled in me and then so on and so forth. But unfortunately, little Ben goes down the street and he just has mom at home or he just has auntie or grandma father's not there so he's being influenced by something else outside influences the reason why i'm bringing that up is i'm going back even back to the musicians these things th these guys meshing with the world um on the basis of music musician life i'm a pianist you're a pianist or i'm a drummer you're a saxophonist so we run in groups well i know that you have an issue but the way you deal with your issue is by smoking marijuana mm -hmm. You smoke weed to deal with your life instead of facing the bad decisions and, and then overcoming those situations. So now we're in a, in, in, a, in a room together. I don't want to seem like the eyeball. I don't have a father. I smoke, right? But I'm still playing in the church. Mm -hmm. Now I'm being told that I sound better when I'm high. So now I'm going to try to go into the church high. <laughs> but then I go into the church high and the pastor sees that I'm high. He talks to me about it. But then the reaction from the crowd is, hey, He's doing a good job. So the pastor wants that crowd. The crowd brings money. It's just a never-ending cycle of it all. Um, and, and I think that, that, that plays a big part. Yeah, into it influence. Well. That's what yeah. it is. It's being influenced. And, you know, I say this all the time. You know, at our, uh, here at uh, ABC, you know, our musicians, um, you know, we don't go outside to bring in musicians that are famous. Right. Our musicians are good enough. So right. we write our own songs. We do their songs here. They don't have to write songs for the world go get famous and then we want to pay up to come back right. we just you know we let our musicians uh, have you know the freedom to play and different things and i think that helps as well because you know you're not your influence isn't outside of the church anymore right your influence is your your, your influence is your peer group now exactly it's 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 from within and i mm -hmm. think if more preachers would do that or more pastors would do that instead of always looking at not saying that there's anything wrong with the songs out on the radio and different things you wouldn't have a job if it were not not saying that but <laughs> but what I'm saying is you know the if every church had music or if, if we would let our musicians play or write their own things and the the pastors and the churches would welcome it then it would shut the whole superstar celebrity mentality down it would. because you would need that and that comes from the world anyway. It's borrowed from the world anyway. I mean, there is no place for a superstar musician. Mm -hmm. I tell them all the time, these guys trying to get large in music and saying, hey, man, you know my brand. I got to, you know, man, folks know me and my likes and this and this. And I said, man, you know, have you ever looked in the Bible for an example of what you're doing? Right. There's only one example mm -hmm. of a superstar celebrity musician in the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
and that's Satan. Mm -hmm. That's Lucifer, the one that fell. Mm -hmm. Because if you are looking to be liked, you're going to please the crowd. Exactly. If you're looking to be liked, you're going to compromise. Mm -hmm. If you go out there to try to make a name for yourself mm -hmm. and you want the world to embrace, to embrace you, mm -hmm. the father is not going to embrace you. Correct. So then let me ask this question. Well, we need to take a break. Oh, so let's take a break. <laughs> All right. Isn't this the last question? <laughs> I'm saying we're going to take a break at the last question. So we're going to talk more about devil worship in the music. We're going to take a quick break, but make sure you visit us online at exministries.com. I mean, these demons and these songs and then these folks are trying to take you somewhere. Did Jesus preach about hell? Jesus spoke of hell way more than he spoke of heaven. Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So who goes to hell? Let's see what they were doing that made the earth open up. The Bible said their thoughts were evil what? continuously the first thing they did was they rebelled against God while claiming to be God's chosen people and then they created their own gods they went back to their old sins finally they rejected God's prophet and his authority so for us to do what we want to do with you we need you to be able to learn evil that's what this was all about. And so the devil can promote his family. Not God's family. The devil's family. These rappers and stuff, they, they rap about it. They sing about it. Because they want to take your children there. They want to take you there. So we're back with more of the exposition and we're talking about devil worship in music. I have to ask you this question because I know, again, I have to go back to when I was growing up, which was not that long ago. <laughs> but they always talked about having conviction and a level of conviction. And even now, when I do something that just quite isn't right, you just feel bad, I would think. So in this situation, going to these concerts or participating with these artists, is there no level of conviction? Well, you know, um, that conviction came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, we know the Holy Spirit convicts us, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit really piggybacks off our code of morality. Okay. If you notice in the Bible, God always talked about mm -hmm. passing on uh, the, you know, passing on what you've learned mm -hmm. to the next generation. Right. Always sharing what you've learned with the next generation. So mm -hmm. that, you know, um, even in Solomon, he was talking about don't depart from my ways, telling mm -hmm. his son, follow my ways and plant them in your heart, uh, hold on to them, keep them, uh, don't remove the old landmarks. I mean, all through the Bible, it right. talks about passing on the lineage of holiness and righteousness. But what this does is this builds a code in us. Right. It builds a code of morality in us mm -hmm. so that the Holy Spirit can remind us of this code uh, when it comes in our lives. But what's happening, and you know, that's passed on, let me say this, that's passed on, of course, from the parents to the child in most right. cases. Uh, most of us remember grandmama staying at grandmama's house and her ga gathering the children around, telling some of us stories at big mama's house about the Lord and Jesus right. coming back and different things. And then our parents, my parents were preachers and different things. You grew up in, both of us grew up in Christian, all of us grew up in Christian homes. So this was instilled in us, this code of morality. Mm -hmm. And so when that code is instilled in you, then you don't get too far away from it when you grow up, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he won't depart right. from it. Right. Well, that's what's missing. Grandmama's at the concert. Wow. Wearing a halter top. Wow. That right. said, bae. Wow. Granddaddy, <laughs> um, great uncle. You know, in my age, that was unheard of for someone to be, I mean, they posing on Instagram. Right. And, you know, they, they, they breaking out the shorts set 
<laughs> they break it. <laughs> the short set. And now they have Instagram. Right, right. And the short set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Snaps and stuff. Well, that, that you know, that's tragic. <laughs> that's tragic. But there was a time when, you know, they were the ones that was teaching us right. righteousness. And now they're out trying to have fun on our level or on the kids level. And that's where the code of morality, that's why there's no conviction there, man. What the adults do in moderation, the children are going to do in excess. So if there's no conviction, and that's why I tell pastors all the time, man, it's our job to hold the line. Right. Like we got to be strict and hard when no one else is. Right. Because when we see the people slipping, it's our job, the Bible says, for us to put the congregation and ourselves in check. Right. Because, you know, judgment starts at the house of God. Right. And so it's going to start through the preachers. Right. And that's the problem. Because the preachers are at the concerts, mm -hmm. then the musician's going to come in there with half his head in rollers and the other half a, a jerry curl <laughs> playing on Sundays. I mean, it's just going to be crazy. Right. And so that's where it is. There's no line anymore because this code of morality isn't being instilled in this generation. And Pastor, you're absolutely correct. You know, when you, when you I mean, even just walking down the aisle of a grocery store, um, it's just not the same with this generation and that we're not bashing the generation we're we're accepting that something went wrong and now that it's in our face we need to do something wherever we wherever we can fit that that correction at right but you walk down the aisle of a, a grocery store you will see a lady walking up the aisle and these young guys these days don't even move out the way they don't hold doors anymore they don't say excuse me anymore it's just it's just whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it however you want to do it um, and that's consistent with everything that we've been talking about in terms of the influence um, so the conviction, as pastors already said, um, it's, it's, it's due to the fact that some, something broke down. I was just having a conversation about this not a couple of days ago. Um, even me standing in my own personal family, right? You, you, you have, I remember the discipline. I remember the standard. I remember, hey, now you're going too far. I, remember, I, I couldn't say, I don't think I could say shut up around my grandmother. Right. It was just certain things that I couldn't do, certain things I couldn't say. Um, and it didn't matter that it, it didn't make sense at the moment. I, now I benefit from that. Now my children benefit from that mm -hmm. because I had that particular parameter placed around me. But we're dealing with a generation of just straight godless people mm -hmm. or, or young people who have no clue of who God is. There's so many different variations, even from the church platforms, unfortunately, that's being given to these kids. It's, it's hard for them to find conviction because the moment they want to attach them, because the young want, they, they can tell if you're real, if you're fake, before you even complete your entire sentence. So if I'm telling you one thing and then I'm doing something complete opposite, they're already writing you off. But if I go over here and this guy's telling me, hey, do this consistently, and then I'm, he's consistently doing it, I feel like there's more value in that consistency, no matter if it's in the wrong or in the right, because I'm too young to understand the difference at that particular point. Yeah, and you just made a, a good point that I wanted to touch on as far as EX Ministries goes. You know, when we first came out, when I first came out with the Truth Behind Hip Hop, I was traveling, I was speaking. Most of the places I went, well, all the places I went were churches. Before there was a YouTube, before all of that, I was going actually to the churches. And when I would preach the message, conviction would set in because of that code of morality we're talking about. Got you. Um, and then I remember an old, you know, uh, 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 an old prophet came to me and told me, he said, man, the devil's on to you. He said, and he, he, the devil has suggested that since he cannot beat you, he's going to join you. I had no idea what that meant at the time. I was mm. like, dude, he's going to join me. I'm thinking it's going to be somebody in my camp. Right. But I, I had no idea. But what he was saying was the enemy knew if he trivializes the Illuminati, right. if he trivializes mm. the devil worship, if he makes it of non-effect or makes it a joke or makes it, you know, uh, 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 a novelty, mm -hmm then it would take away some of the power of the message that I was carrying. Because at the time, I was the only person exposing the Illuminati, you know, globally right. uh, as it pertained to the African-American community. And so what he, when YouTube came, which is owned by Google, of course, and this is why I don't like YouTube much, um, but 
has some good uses in mm. some cases, but when they came, they begin to, guys begin to ex do what I was doing. They right. begin to expose the Illuminati mm -hmm. and expose, you know, the secret behind the music, the devil worship or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they would do it without the altar prayer, exactly. without Christ, without right. leading people to the Lord. They right. would just put it up there, the devil in music, this, this. Well, over a long period of time after this, degrading of the moral code and the missing moral element in the homes of people this be, it, it just became trivial to people right they don't if they don't really know who the devil is mm -hmm. now they don't really even believe there's a hell right i have to do a whole message part 12 of the truth on hip hop to just remind people hey you oh, know hell real. is somewhere <laughs> burning right yeah. and so because they weren't used to i mean because they're not hearing that message about hell because they're not hearing who the devil really is because they're not hearing about this these things it just came off as trivial well let mm -hmm. me use the devil and get a beat right let me use the devil and get a uh, and get hits on the on youtube mm -hmm. and it stopped meaning uh what it meant before and mm -hmm. that was the devil's plan you know, all along. So, I mean, that tell that tells me as a pastor, and I'm I'm sure as as parents, that tells us that man, we got to get back to instilling the truth into our kids to form this moral barrier, so that when the when they see the devil, they'll know who the who devil is, is. Exactly. And, and and I'm not budding with him because I know he's the antithesis of Christ, and I want to serve Christ. Right. And see, Pastor, you make a good point. You say when they see the devil. Because what I'm hearing a lot of times now is just pray for him or <laughs> don't worry about it. He, everybody make mistakes, that kind of thing. Why are we so accepting when we see artists that are doing things that are unbecoming as a Christian? Why are we just like, just pray for him, cover him? I mean, it, it, you can look at it a couple of different ways, but I think the main thing would be um, ignorance, right? Well, I wouldn't call it the main thing. I, I think one end of it is just lack of of if I'm not raising my own children, I'm definitely mm -mm. not about to fight the devil. Mm -mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -mm. So if, if I'm not taking responsibility in my home, I'm not even being responsible on my job. If I'm on my fifth job in six months, there's no way you can bring to me a situation dealing with the devil that I'm going to give any attention to or time. I don't, I don't, I don't have, I'm not, you know what I mean? So unfortunately that's a part of, a part of the church. Um, today, and that's not to say that the church in its entirety, right? Because we're a part of the church mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're, we're certainly fighting every day, not mm -hmm. to put places on a pedestal. But the point I'm making is there are there are people on the front lines of this thing. And there are people who are doing their part in the process of making sure we win as many souls to Christ as we can. But if I'm I'm not going to be as hard on something when I'm I'm trying to get away with something myself. You understand what I'm saying? So if, if I'm allowing the devil to attack me in every area of my life and he's winning and beating upon me, I certainly can't aid, aid you in your fight against them. So th th that's an issue. But another thing is this. People are normally attracted to their true, their true person or who they, who, what they really want. Mm -hmm. So if I have in the back of my mind that I'm on my grind and every day I wake up, I'm, as they say, modern day time, now they're chasing the bag, which means they want to get money or they want to make a lot of money or mm -hmm. I want my name out there or the things that I'm able to do, I feel like I should be uh, noticed for it. If I see somebody else doing that, I don't care if you're getting it by way of the devil or, or Kermit the Frog, as long as I can get some of that. Mm -hmm. And that, that becomes an issue, but that's, that's an issue in the church because we have to be, we have to be more responsible than that. I can't stand idly by and allow you to just mix and mingle however you want to and then call myself upholding the standard. That's an inconsistency. Uh, and, uh, so the Bible says that if you don't continue, right? God said if you didn't continue with us, then you were never with us from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that's a, that's a point of view that we need to really start um, um, viewing it from. Um, people are just simply going after who they really are. So go by the action of the person. Um, instead of just the words, because sometimes I'm going to use the words just to draw you. But by the time you get to me, it's going to be something totally different, which is who the devil is, the true deceptor. I tell people all the time, you're not picking music. Deceiver. You, music's picking you. Mm. Right. You know, folks think they went and this is the style I like. No, 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 no. That music picked you. Right. Uh, there was something going on in it that, that, that targeted you and it picked you. And when that music picks you, 
you're gonna cut for the artist. Mm -hmm. Like people, when they listen to music, they think they know these people. And I tell people all the time, they think they know them. That's why at the concerts, they crying, they almost falling out, fainting. They, you know, just wanna touch the hem of their, whatever they're wearing, the costume. Yeah. They think they know these people because these people have brought them through tough times. Mm -hmm. Trials and tribulations. Sam Cooke was singing in the background. <laughs> and somebody thought they knew Sam Cooke. Right. And it's been like that ever since. You know, they, they think they know because they're addicted to this music. You know, music can really give you dopamine releases just like yeah, exactly, drugs. Yeah. You know, and we have that in several of our videos. So these people are getting high on some of these artists. So it's, it, these artists are like crack to them. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to defend them if you come against them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely are. I mean, even speaking on, um, um, again, with respect and prayers for to Aretha Franklin's family, um, I, I seen a clip and they were for some, I, and I don't even understand having video at a funeral, but they, I seen a clip of the, the funeral and as they were carrying her casket, everybody was yelling at the casket, queen. So even in that, or even the idea of um, uh, showing up to a funeral in droves like that because this woman entertained you for 40 years, it, that in and of itself should make a person in their right mind challenge the, those particular actions. You should want to know why, if I don't know you, why do I want to be at your funeral as if it's a, another form of a concert? You're, you're not singing to me anymore. That's a spirit there that needs to be not only recognized, but dealt with. Um, well, and, and, and then people overlook the lifestyle that she lived. Mm -hmm. and how you know all that she had been through i mean this stuff comes out when a person dies right but while they're living nobody cares get in there and sing mm -hmm. grab the microphone entertain me make me feel like you made me feel in 1976. that's all anyone cares about and that's sad especially for the church to target her as a celebrity but right. the church couldn't win her that's very sad very sad mm -hmm. is that it Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> looking at like you. Got something else? Nine, come up okay. some more. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to close with this. And, um, you know, we, 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 we pray for the people that we talk about. Absolutely. Uh, we, you know, the people that I mentioned. I, I call names because these people do these things in public. So, I mean, it's, I'm not revealing anything that you can't find with a Google search. Or you, you could ask these folks and they'll tell you what I'm telling you. But, um, right. We want to make sure that we do pray for him and that they come out of this. You know, even when the rich young ruler, when he uh, was speaking to Jesus, uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus looked on him and loved him. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to suggest in any kind of way that we don't love these people. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we care for their souls and we want them to repent and, and, and you know, and, and straighten up and be right. Absolutely. But we're going to hold a line because we're called to do that as believers. Uh, we are called to judge mm -hmm. righteous judgment. Absolutely. So those of you that'll that'll comment, y'all judging. Yes, we are. Yeah, We're definitely absolutely. judging. But the Bible tells us to judge righteous judgment. So the bottom line to this whole uh, uh, episode that we're talking about or that we've been talking uh, in uh, is we should never listen to songs that minister evil to our hearts because the devil uh, was only given one true ability, which is music then we should be aware of his crafty and cunning plan to defeat us through our music choices. That should be obvious. The artists today no longer hide who their true allegiance is to. Their songs are about sin. Their videos promote lust and perversion. Their concerts are worship services, and they all display satanic alliances through hand signs, gestures, visual effects, all of this stuff. There is no more room for doubting who they serve. They will let you know now. How can a born again believer support and defend these types of people? The Bible is clear. And this is for everyone who emails me and texts me and tells me what should I be listening to? The Bible is clear on what Christians should be listening to when it comes to their music choices. Colossians 3 and 16 tells us, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So he's saying, let the word of Christ be put in you and mm -hmm. dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in what? Psalms and hymns and what? Spiritual songs. Spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Thank you.